Ingvar Olsen, give him a big applause. Ingvar has been a professor here at the University of Science and Technology for 27 years. You've been working in this business for at least uh, 35 years, published a lot of scientific publications, had a lot of students, and uh, you are a really knowledgeable person about the, the wide uh, problems and challenges and opportunities in this business. I have to ask you before you enter into the interesting world of mesopelagic uh, fish, why did you end up in fish, Ingvar? Uh, I'm not only in fish. You see, I see what I'm, I'm interested in, in, let's say, now in my later years, decade, in, in, in seafood production for humans and how we can increase this. And, and mesopelagic fish is, is among the, the things, the elements there. So, um, but, but this is a main, main interest. Uh, and it has, uh, I think it's it, your hobby. Yeah, it's a hobby. <laughs> because you don't see it in my publications. But you see it in my lectures for my students. Yeah, and you're interested in why, why can't we produce more yes, a, a, from the ocean? Uh, because uh, agriculture today accounts for 98% energy-wise of our food, and, and the sea for 2%, including aquaculture. And, and with the same primary production input. And this is the challenge that I've been into my head for more than 10 years, 15, 20 maybe. It's very interesting, but now put your head into the mesopelagic fish, yes. and the floor is yours, Ingmar. Thank you. Uh, I hope I can operate this. Next. So, uh, it, it's almost impossible to assess the, 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 the biomass and production of this, but I would do this based on, let's say, the, the, the biological laws of energy. We don't require any fishery assessment or or cruises and so on. So remember that, and it's impossible, so I need to be very brave. But it's easier to be brave in my age than when I was young. So let's start a little bit because uh, the food production, food security has been a main objective for, for the century, and, and, and now the, the marine food comes on the map, actually, because earlier it was only agriculture, so this is quite new. I've been th into this all while going from only agriculture to now, also includes seafood. And, and the question, can the ocean produce more food for humans? And then I add, why, of course, we need to do this in a sustainable way and all this, and I will not repeat this in every sentence. And I was interested, you say, you see, you brought up this. I took part in this group. This was very fascinating. And, and in a way, I, I was really affected by this on the long term. And, and this SAPEA uh, 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 is an organization of the science academies in Europe. And, and the commissioners, the commission can ask for advice. And they ask for this advice. And of course there is a report here, it's, it goes back some years now, but for me five years is nothing. So uh, what came out of this, and, and also you, you, you just got, got the point that now that, um, in, that he was just showed, and um, I almost used your father's name. But, uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, and, and there are a lot of things I just jump over. I could have been interested to speak about point eight in fisheries. But of course, this is not very carefully treated in the reports. But the, the conclusion was, yes, there is potentials, clear potentials in aquaculture. But they don't come easily either there. It's not only to build new farms. Fisheries, perhaps, also, yes, there is, and, and uh, we just heard about options, but there are many constraints, political, cultural, everything, in fisheries that are much more difficult than with aquaculture, which is a newer, let's say, industry. So, um, and, and I go, um, uh, let's say, a little bit directly to the, to, to the possible new resources and omit all the small stuff here, because there is a long list there, if you like, of course, losses is, is a major f f concern for, for many, and, and, and of course, and some say that the, the losses are more than twice, three times higher than officially claimed by FAO. And of course, and I, I heard also Antarctic krill is mentioned now, because this is a huge resort, but it's difficult to capture. It has a little bit, as the mesopelagic fish is, is everywhere. So you, you only fish it where the, where the whales Create, there are, there are uh, swarms, some places where the whales also feed, and then you can catch it, but 
the, the, the cliffs are everywhere. If you go down with the camera, you see it in the fjord there. It's everywhere. The Red Feet is also something that we have explored now in, in our country for a while. And then we have, and I say that, I, I say that these are uh, animals in high, uh, uh, with having potential, and, and, and they are uh, relatively low or high in the food chain. And, and remember that the mesoperatic fish is not on the bottom of a food chain. Not at all. Many claim so, but of course, it's not. It's, it's up there, and I will put it into the stream soon. This is just a picture, recognized, and it's not normally eaten by people. So, uh, a little bit um, um, on, on this uh, type of fish, because there is uh, estimates now how, how, of the biomass of this, which is, well, from zero, from very high to very high numbers. And, and this uh, reflects that this is not easy at all, because they are spread around. I've heard things today, I agree to everything said on that. And it's, it's also impossible to capture, or very difficult. The global distribution is placed in, in the deep water. So the silvery light fish is maybe the one that I will now focus because this is the, the one that I most mentioned here with us. But it's a, it's a mass, so batopelatic fish goes, goes really deep. And then uh, four centimeter, three years lifespan, stop plankton, mainly but also small fish at, at food. Nobody knows this exactly. Uh, this means, uh, and this is a term I will bring it into you, and you will need to hear more. Trophic level, 3.3, 3.6. So this is herring mackerel level, known species with us. So there have been experimental uh, catches that have been tested as feed for aquaculture as far as I've seen a few years ago. A little bit of this tropic level, because some of you don't know anything about this is, because this has something to do with the law, the biological laws of energy. So do we say that for phytoplankton, trophic level one, so plankton eating uh, phytoplankton two, and, and then fish eating so plankton only, and then we leave up and then we end up with higher levels. So there are, uh, it's not uh, common to, 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 to assume that there are more than five levels because uh, there is an issue, and, and this couples this to energy. This was my, my, my beginning, and if we say that the primary production, this is 100% input, each time you go through a step, you lose 90%. And this is a, an old figure, it comes from very old classical literature, but it had also been revisited. And it's not exactly 10, but many of the calculations done are so rough that this is still an okay number. And it will vary from 20 maybe to 5, but I, I don't consider that because I don't have time for it. But, but this is the link to the energy, the, the biological energy, and you, you, you never come out of this. You, each time you go in a food chain up, you lose 90%. So this is one of the, point, of the, of the weak points of fisheries because, um, because uh, we only harvest on high, high trophic levels almost. So we lose most of the primary production on the way. Not aquaculture doesn't do the same. And I used it now, and I, I don't go into the method, but you can look up, you use a so-called trophic model, which is a model um, saying something about what I've talked about now, and it's very rough, mm -hmm. but okay, and there are input variables, and what I would point to is a paper by, Christi, by Perry and Christensen from 95, which tested and used this method, and did an estimation that was very important for me to consider. I will mention a little bit later. So this is the method, you can look it up if you are very interested, but it's, it's, um, you, need a, you need to be quite good in Excel. This is the only idea. So input variable in, in, in this type of estimations is the trophic level, because then it says how many passages you have, how, how many times you have lost as 90%. And also you can look up, if you like, this is the web page where all these tropic level stuff are mentioned. Many papers are cited, and, and I, I picked up the average. So, so these are trophic levels for common uh, Peru and the Chobi and, and, and yellowfin tuna and Atlantic cod. And you see that, and I put a ring here on, on the silver free light fish because there are some data on that also. But it is very, very weak. But I, I, I assume this is a range. They are 
in between, I, I saw 3.3 to 3.6 or 4, I don't remember from the, num from the number I showed, but this is where I assume it will be. And then, uh, and then I can, <laughs> in a way, recalculate back how much uh, do they use of the primary production to come down. This is not straightforward, it's not a common way to see it, but it's the energy of biology, it's the law of biology, energy-wise. So if we assume that all, all primary production, all soil plant production ends up there, and this is strange to, to assume that it's almost stupid, no, no food left for other species. And then it would look like this, and again, all, of, all the plant production ends up in soil plant, and on, they are offered all this. And you say, that this is not possible because there is a lot of fish, we fish a lot already, Yes, of course. So, so this is the absolute maximum, let's say, production uh, I come up with at the end. And I call it the brave estimate. And, and the, the result here now, by going through these uh, formulas, is that the maximum, if, if they have all the energy, let's say, of the, of the phytoplankton, primary production in the seed on the table, that could be um, one to two billion tons per year produced. And then, of course, you see here, and of course, there is no way to come above that. So these 10 mentioned in my early slide, that's impossible. So the, the, the low was, was one, and, and that's it's still too high, much too high. So this is the, uh, uh, my inspiration to do this, this assumption is that um, only and Christensen, when I did this, you know, they, they found that today's catches and, 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 and catches and discards needed 8% 8 of, the, of the global, of the marine primary production. So where are the rest of 92? So this made, you know, so 8%, so 92 is, is approximately the same as 100. So this is, is why I did this, let's say, brave calculation, if I call it. And of course, um, um, Yes, the remaining 90% is assumed to support the production of mesoplastic species. So this is not so far away, but, but still that they are able to take care of all this production without any other losses, that's not likely at all. It's very speculative, but it's the maximum theoretical potential, potential, production potential. And also be aware, biomass is not the same as, as production. With, because I, to look into this, you need to say know a little bit about the lifespan and all this. But no, it, it will, it, it, I would guess it would be a little bit same, the same size, of course, here. Uh, because of their size and, and they need to, 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 to double. But of course, this harvest has large environmental concerns. I'm, I'm, I still have a lot of minutes left. Uh, there is, a, as I already had mentioned, the concern on the marine food chains, because these pelomasopelagic fishes are obviously food for many. And this is all the breaks my hands comes up immediately by, by people in fishery research, in, in all type of marine research, that this is, this is a threat. We need to know more, because these are unknown interactions. And it's also that the, the, there is another issue with, with this, because they go up and down. And most likely, they are the train, the rapid train for organic carbon produced by sun and phytoplankton growth are brought down to deep water. This is the most important mechanism in a biological pump of carbon out of the upper water, so the upper area of the sea. And, and this will be recognized in the next 10 years. There will be a, a big stop still. On, 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 uh, on, on, on this harvest. But if, I think maybe the production is so high that and the potential is also that there is a little bit for everyone. But, uh, yeah, but this, should be, this should be considered from the beginning. Uh, there is a paper, and there is even Norwegian authors here, and I, I, forgot the, I get this, got this to, to Frontiers, and I took it as a reviewer myself, because I thought it was so interesting. And, uh, and of course, this is a good paper. Very good, and uh, you may know some of the names. As concluding, so this is what I've mentioned now, it's the maximum theoretical production potential, which will never be realized. 
So when I say, based on educated guess and some experience, maybe 10% of it. Maybe 10%. But now I'm on a lower level, and you may say that, oh, he's very pessimistic. No, well. And then, but still, then we are on the same level as, as normal, all, all what we fish from the sea. This is approximately the same. Then the 100, well, 180 and 90, same here. And uh, feed and food, mostly what we, what we think about more, this is more feed. And of course, feed for aquaculture is, is, is one main issue in the future. And aquaculture, it's difficult, maybe almost impossible to, to harvest <coughs> for the, the, the reasonable cost. <coughs> so the constraints now I mentioned, ecological and climate constraints, they would come up. 0.00, 0, 0. exactly. 